And we're back. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. Once again, I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox. We're here at live from New York City, Midtown, with my guest, Craig Schlesinger. Schlesinger Selinger. Schlesinger Selinger. Selinger. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. We were just taking a little playbook out of Bobby Seeger Jr.'s. I can still uh, see the crumbs <laughs> from all the food he had here. When he was, was that like a month ago? The donuts? No, I still that was haven't a, cleaned up after. That was a while after ago. Yeah. That was a while ago. Um, it wasn't like that. Um, so let's get back to talking about how you got into what, you, what your businesses are. Sure. And then we'll, we'll kind of draw that because you, I think that really led into our interaction that put you in the hot seat. Again, yeah. Besides my just complete adoration for you. How did you get started in speech pathology? Did you go to school for this? Are you are you educated? Yeah. So uh, I'm actually shocking. Gonna, yeah, <laughs> I know, right? No. So it, it, I'm an example that actually education worked. I'm one of those rare examples where um, it actually worked out. The Keep money, telling the, yourself the, that. The, the money, the money that I spent, my parents spent, and the loans we took out worked worked out. Nice. Um, so actually, I'm going to back up a little bit if that's back okay. Back it up. Back, yeah, it up. back it up. So I think I started my first company when I was 10, nice. and it was and it was called Jack for Jeff, Eric, and Craig. And Jeff and Eric were my boys from back in the day, and we did snow removal, Massapequa, Massapequa Park. <laughs> and and I think somewhere I still have like uh, a flyer, like a handwritten flyer. You got some the, invo- some outstanding invoices. <laughs> oh man, it's like. That paid for my actually paid for my college with the the late invoices yeah, and the interest yeah. made. So <laughs> right. now I know jujitsu, like it's it's <laughs> <some enforcement. laughs> it helps. Um so we did, yeah, we would when it would snow, we would just like knock on people's doors, shovel snow, we made money. Um and and I think it's on it like back then it was like I, I realized I hate to say this, I'm not I'm not a superficial guy, but I had money and it was just like I'm tan, I got like what am I gonna do with the money? So oh, like cash. Gar- so like Gary V, I was super into baseball cards. I didn't oh. I was scared to sell them. Instead, I thought they were stocks. So yeah, like every, sure. yeah, yeah, and we got fucked. I mean, the baseball everyone that took that collected baseball cards got fucked. Yeah. So I still have my baseball card collection, and I thought that was gonna pay for college and and, and did not at but all. But if you still had it now, I still have it. Oh well it's worth even less. Are you, I am check? not joking. When was the last time you checked? Because I like a year ago. No, look, look now, because I think lately things have kind of turned you up. Serious? A little bit. That's what I heard. That's what I, I heard. Who are you talking to? King uh, Griffin Jr. Well, is he Gary V be talking about it, but uh yeah, I'll check that's it out. That's funny. I was on the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh-huh. I used to steal baseball cards. No. Oh, yeah, <laughs> a you lot told of me. Them. You told me that crazy I got a, story. I got arrested. This is a crazy story. I got arrested yeah. when I was 14 this for stealing two thousand dollars worth of baseball cards and paraphernalia, including some like major old school Yankee rookie cards and stuff. And it was it was so insane. What, what I hate to bring it, but what, seriously, what was going on in your mind as 14 year old Jeremiah. Good. I was high. Yeah, we're just no, high. Yeah, we were out running around causing trouble. That was okay. like, that was a good, that was about a 25 year segment of my life. Wow. <laughs> just, and then, you know, half the time I did good and like ran yeah. businesses, and the other, t- the other half I caused a lot of trouble and did some dumb shit. Wow. Um, and that was during the dumb shit, one of the dumb shit eras. And um, so when you got caught, did you, yeah. did you wake up or you still, oh, no, 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 you kept yeah, going. No. I mean, not, I, I stopped stealing baseball cards. Okay, I was but, like, let's move on to something else. Oh, yeah, man. I started selling weed instead. But, okay. Yeah, I continued the legal act. <laughs> but wow. that was my last foray into baseball cards but Got i had collected uh-huh. prior probably starting at like eight years old uh-huh. and that was like a really hot time when like did you do baseball or did you do other sports uh i mean i did all sports, did but, all sports? but baseball yeah. cards were like that was uh-huh. that was the jam like you oh, know football thing. cards yeah. and basketball cards and stuff didn't uh, have the same allure <laughs> This was like Don Mattingly rookie yep. era, Jose Canseco, yep. Mark McGuire. You know, those cards were worth ridiculous yep. money at the time. And I was like, you know. Mark McGuire USA card yeah, was like, yeah, yeah Jose and Canseco was, 86. Yep. It wasn't just the tops. It was like a special edition, like yep. a tops. Yeah. And Fleer. Yeah, and yeah. Fleer came was, out. There was yep. another one I can't remember, but they were all hot yep. items. And yep. um, there was uh, my grandfather owned this this little like five unit shopping strip, and they had a he had a he had baseball of, cards. One of his tenants was oh. was a baseball cards uh, shop, and nice. uh, I used to go just hang out in that there. That was just, probably like, the best. Fantasize over yeah. and then I, it was funny because I was just uh-huh. like a little kid. I was like eight or nine, and I was like plotting yeah. how I would steal them. Oh my <laughs> back god! Because they were too so, expensive for me to buy. So you would actually look at them and then 
there could be a way for me to actually yeah. steal this. And then, and I never well, did it there, but I there the opportunity ass. came, and really? my buddies and I hop on it, and we got caught, and yeah. Wow. <laughs> Crash and burn. <laughs> Inter- interesting. <laughs> so that was my foray into wow. entrepreneurship. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Something well, for nothing. I, I hope my, my websites don't get hacked yeah. right after the mm. segment. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so where did you go to school? Yeah, so... And yeah, so I, what did you study? What were your degrees in? Yeah, so so since the age of 10, I've been working. I've, mm-hmm. I've literally been, been working nonstop. Um, so at age 10, I had between 10 and college, I just had like a lot of random jobs, mm-hmm. which is really important because a lot of these jobs sucked yeah. and, and it's great. It's mm-hmm. great to have shitty jobs, yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, and, and when I had these shitty jobs, I still had fun. Like I, I knew I'm like, fortunately I had the mentality where like, I'm not going to be a bus boy for the rest of my life. Um, but <laughs> there you go. Um, I'll be busing and tables I, and, tonight. And I was, I was in the, yeah, I was in the food industry um, from like 15 through college. Yeah. And, uh, and so it, again, it paved the way for me to make money and learn how to save money and learn what you didn't want to do. Yeah. No, it's often more yes, important than yes, uh, there's so yes, much pressure on yep. young people today. Yeah, and yep, it's like, uh, yep. what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And they're yeah. like, I don't know. And they freeze up and I'm yeah. like, forget that. Like, yep. Just go get a job and don't worry about if you hate it. Don't worry if you're gone in six weeks or six months. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It's, it, if you don't know what you want to do, know what you don't want to do. Know what absolutely I do not want to do that. And I got the t-shirt to prove it and, and then move on. You know, I think that's really important. Yeah. It's all about experiences create opportunities, mm-hmm. right? And you can't have the mindset where I'm only going to take advantage of positive, great, you, you know, right, you shouldn't right. steal cards, you know, you shouldn't do anything that's high risk. Don't judge. <laughs> I know, I'm getting a little judgy here. Um, I might steal yours. <laughs> know, you I'm just put, told me I'm you gonna put, your I'm going to move my wallet I know where you live. in my pants. <laughs> But Tim's watching, so Tim, right? Tim, you'll help me out. Tim's gonna help me pick your lock. <laughs> True. Now I'm in deep. You know what? Um, <laughs> I gotta watch what I say. Um, you, you've said fuck like ten times already. Though. I guess. I guess. I know. I don't know this why. This is already marked as polite. explicit. I'm like, Look who's watching. So, yeah, but no, but for, honestly, it's it's all about you know. At any age, it really doesn't matter if you're a kid. And even as a parent, it's like, I don't shield, like, give me, and I don't, I mean, some stuff you shield your kids from, but I want my kids to experience disappointment, yeah. you know? Absolutely, Absolutely. delayed gratification um, because these are life skills, right? Yep. Um, and so, anyway, so going to college, what happened was my first week at college, University of Wisconsin, Madison, I grew up in Long Island. I had, I had, so people don't know this. People think cows you, you and thought farms. you were going to make a lot of money shoveling <laughs> snow. <laughs> I know. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, this, ah, snow. Man, that's raw. So, no. So what people don't know, Madison's an awesome city. So it's the, it's the city of Madison is the capital of, is the capital city of Wisconsin. And it's on an isthmus, which is a piece of land, two beautiful lakes, Super liberal, progressive city. Awesome art scene, music scene. It's just it's just cold as shit. Um, but other than that, I loved it. I had I was there for undergrad. I was there for my masters, and then my first week at UW, go Badgers! By the way, um, Josh Filipowski, if you're if you're listening, and all my Badger friends. So first week. Um, it's, it's like welcome week before school started. I go to my first bar and I have a fake ID, and I'm like pumped. So. Josh and I go to this fake bar at go fake bar, go, go to a bar with fake IDs and like an hour in the cops come in. So we go to the back of the bar and I, you know, at the time I'm like 18, I look like I'm 15. And so I'm like, oh, the cops won't see me. I'm like in the back, like minding my business Next thing. Like they tap me on the shoulder. Can we see your ID? So I got nailed with the ticket and I, and I, and I barely had the money to pay the ticket. So it was actually, an opportunity to get a job. And I knew I was going to get a job at some point, but not right away. I figured maybe I could. How like, did you get out of this ticket? <laughs> how did I get it? So I started. What are you about to tell us? So I, we started, Josh and I started an insurance company where we knocked on everyone's door in our dorm. And if you put in a dollar, um, we'd put your name on a list. So if you got a ticket, everyone on the list would contribute a dollar. It's like an insurance policy to help pay your ticket. That paid for almost half of our tickets. I think they call that a racket. <laughs> whatever. Whatever you want to call it. I didn't, your it's a dollar. Name, your last name doesn't end in a vowel. What, what, what's that? <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> Sam got it. <laughs> oh, I, I hear he said. I'll just let that one fly. Mm-hmm. So, um, so then I landed a job at 
the Langdon, which was our dorm, the cafeteria. And I worked there sophomore year, sorry, freshman year and sophomore year. And um, so I went to UW, Wisconsin. And then I, I knew going in that I was a science math guy. My, mom's, my mom was a teacher in East New York. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I was a camp counselor. I like being around kids. I wanted to do something with teaching, but I didn't want to be a teacher. I didn't want to be like a psychologist. Right, right. So I just took like a random course. It was like a 4 p.m. class on Wednesday. I'm like, this is great. I don't have to wake up early. And, and it just blew my mind. It was called Introduction to Communicative Disorders. And it was the mm-hmm. science of communication and actually learning. And it was one of those things where it just like, it punched me in the face. And it was like the aha moment. Yeah. I'm like, I love this stuff. Like, this is, this is great. And I dug it. Where's the heart? Oh, yeah, right here. <laughs> so this goes out to Dr. Julia Evans, who she was teaching the class at oh, the time. Oh, heart. so cute. That's Thank awesome. you. Who did that? And, um, and she took ish, me under her, her wing. And so that was, I had an opportunity, it was an opportunity and I jumped on it. Like, you know, like, so if I see like your arms flailing, I, and yeah. I, I jumped at it yeah. and, and I took full advantage and, and that led to other opportunities where I then got introduced to Dr. Seth Pollack. Thank you, Dr. Seth Pollack. And he's a psychologist and I started working in his lab. And then I got, um, I got uh, like a scholarship to go to grad school at Wisconsin. Nice. Cool. And I was working in a lab there. So you doing stayed research. there. Through, I stayed there. Master's degree. Yeah, I stayed there. Yeah. So I was there for six, six years. And, uh, and that led me to become a licensed speech language pathologist. Once I graduated, I moved to New York and then I landed my first job. Wait, you were working for somebody else? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did. I wasn't working for myself. But the same yeah. in that same field you were doing. Yeah, that. I was a licensed. Yeah. So when I moved to New York City in 2003, I worked for an early intervention company called Chip. And we worked mostly with kids, babies and toddlers. And a lot of these kids had autism. So we go to homes, work with these kids, work with families. It was a school in Queens for kids on the autism spectrum. So we'd work with kids at the school. So it's kind of like half the day I was at homes helping families. And then I'd work at the school doing speech language therapy with, with these young kids, mostly with these kids with autism. Gotcha. Yeah. And then from there, I worked at Mount Sinai Hospital, a therapeutic nursery, working with East Harlem families, which was like an amazing opportunity. Uh, and then I started doing like some, picking up some work with the Department of Ed, working with uh, school-aged children. And then I started getting into private. And then in 2009, I, I left Manhattan. I took a break. I actually traveled a bit. Um, and I went to Southeast Asia at the time for three months. And that's also, I think it's really important is that for people to take breaks and just kind of take a step back. And it's yeah. really, yeah. You're, you're talking like, to the wrong guy. I know. <laughs> and anyway, sorry. Speaking um, of which. I still, I still have the love. So. We're going to take a break, though. Yeah. This, is, I am, this one's forced on me, though. We'll be back in a few. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. <laughs> 